In this video, I'm gonna show you eight N to N AI agent hacks that I wish I knew when I got started that will help you build AI agents at three times the speed and make them way more powerful. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele, and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement these sort of AI solutions and taught over 17,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so here we have an agent in N to N, and the first hack is that you can actually chat to it but you can make the chat public available because tons of times you can actually speak to the AI agent like this, but what if you don't want to go into NNN? What happens then? Do you have to use Telegram? Do you have to use WhatsApp? Well, in this case, you can actually get a link using this button right here. You can copy it. We can then make the actual agent active, which means that we can use it now. And if I paste it here, I can see that now I can actually chat to it as if it's a chatbot. Something that most people don't know because that, hence why they connect this to a Telegram or something else. Well, you can actually just use this URL, which is public, that you can chat to it, say hello. And this will execute, right? If I go to executions, I can see that we just executed the workflow, right? It went here, it used the open router, which is the LLM, which is its brain, and it gave us, hey, how can I assist you today? And let's say I wanted to send a message in Gmail, I said, send an email to michele.35 at gmail.com. I'm gonna press go. So we sent it a message. And now it's asking us, sure, what would you like the subject and message email to be? As you can see here, again, it ran. So if I refresh, I can see that it ran again. And the input was, send an email to michele.35. And if I say that we have dinner tomorrow, I can go. This would just ask me the subject line because of the fact that we didn't prompt it right. But let's say it's dinner at 7 p.m. And now you can see that the email about having dinner at 7 p.m. has been sent. So if I go to my email, I can see that we have dinner at 7 p.m. right here. All right, the second set of hacks is within the brain of the AI agent, which in this case is Open Router. And in case you wanna watch how to connect Open Router to N10, check out the video up here. But as you can see here, we have all the models we can think of, Quen, Grok, ChatGPT, DeepSeek, all that stuff. But the hacks is within the options. So we have all these options that most people don't use because they have no clue what they are. So the first one is frequency penalty. So the frequency penalty can either go to, I believe two, and it can either go to negative two, right? So from negative two to two. A lower value tells ChatGPT, hey, can you make the actual thing more repetitive? Which means whatever you're saying, use the same kind of words. Whilst if I put two, a higher value, it's more creative. So we're giving ChatGPT or the, I'm saying ChatGPT because we're using OpenAI, but we're giving the brain or the AI agent the ability to change how repetitive it is with the answers that it gives us. Then the second one is maximum number of tokens. And so a token is actually four characters. So if I put a token limit of let's say 200, this would be roughly 800 characters, which means that it will cut the actual text, the output that the LLM in this case gives us. This is great if you want to set a limit on the amount of words that you want the AI, in this case, the brain, to give you to actually save money on credits for the ChatGPT, Claude, Grok, anything like that. The next one is response format. So we have text and we have JSON. So usually you would have text, but JSON is great in case you want to take some sort of input and structure it in a way where we have variables come out, right? So let's say we have a block of text which contains first name, last name, and email, right? But it's not structured, it's all within one place. We use JSON to actually structure it so we can divide the first name, divide the last name, and divide the email. But usually we use text just because of the fact that we also have another hack which allows you to do that structuring thing that I just told you about. Then we have presence penalty. So instead of words, in this case, it's the topic itself. So if you put a higher number, then it's more creative. A lower number is more repetitive. Then we have sampling temperature. So a lower temperature in this case is more predictable and the higher temperature is more creative. So we give AI the ability to be more creative when giving us the output. Then we have timeout. So sometimes the AI agent actually runs and the open router starts running and it doesn't work, right? It keeps on running and running and running. Maybe there's some problem with a server. So what we say here is we say, hey, you have 360,000 milliseconds, I assume. Maximum amount of time request. Yeah, milliseconds. And we say, hey, you can only go until this long. And after that, just stop. It's just easier when you want to error handle, which means that when something goes wrong, just stop the workflow. When it runs past a certain time period, in this case, it's 360,000 milliseconds, um, and we just stop. The next one is max retries. So sometimes you use Open Router, the LLM, but it doesn't work. So you say, hey, if something doesn't work, just try again this many times. So if you put 10, then it will try again 10 times. Then we have top P, as you can see here, if I go hover, it says controls diversity. So 
it's controlling the diversity of the output that we get from the LLM. All right, the next hack is actually the ability for AI to be able to enable a fallback method. So enable a fallback method means that if this doesn't work, we can actually add a new LLM as a fallback, right? So if I put OpenAI here, that means that it will first try here and then it will try OpenAI. So let's say I go here and I add a fake connection. I do Michele, so just do test, save. Let's do this, test, right? So this is a fake credential, it shouldn't work. If I go here and I chat to it, hello? What this will now do is that it will go here, it has an error, but it will try again because it has a fallback LLM. And so that's amazing because sometimes the first one doesn't work, but the second one does. All right, the next one is within the actual memory. So if I go inside, I can see that we have a context window length, which most people still have no clue what it means. What this means is that five, this is the amount of past interactions. So let's say you say, hey, how are you? That's the first interaction, a response. Then you ask another question, which is, can you send an email to John? And then can you add a Google Sheet? Can you add X, Y, Z, right? Then it will get the past interactions, which is your questions, as context for the next output, right? So if you put 10, or if you put 15, then it will take more interactions in the past that it will use as context. Now, why do we want to restrict this to about five to 10? Is because the more interactions, the more, how would you put it? The more context you give it, the more it can pull, the more credits you use. And so five, I think is a suitable amount of interactions that we can use within the AI agent, but you can increase or you can decrease. The next hack is actually within the tools. If I go here and I put think, I can see that I have a think tool, which invites the AI agent to do some thinking. So in theory, the AI agent typically thinks through what it needs to do using its prompt or its LLM. In this case, it would be open router, but we give it an additional tool, the think tool, which allows it to think even more. As you can see here, we have a predefined prompt, which is a prompt that we never put before. It's already here, which has use a tool to think about something. It will not obtain new information or change the database, but just append the thought to the log, use it when complex reasoning or some cache memory is needed. And so this right here is the ultimate assistant AI agent that I built, which is connected to a contact agent, email agent, calendar agent, and content creation agent. And so by feeding it the tool, which is the think tool, it gives it the ability to have a, another step of reasoning. Reasoning just means to think through what it needs to do, to then be able to actually take the right action in the right order, as opposed to not having this and just using the prompt and using AI, right? Sort of like that extra step. And the next hack is actually the ability for us to be able to connect AI agents within the tools. Because most times what you do is just connect it to the software. So Gmail, or you can connect it to an external workflow. So you say sub workflow, so where is it? Sub uh, workflow, calling anytime workflow right here, which basically calls another workflow to take action. But what if the workflow was inside this workflow, right? And well, in this case, we have access to the contact agent, which is another AI agent, which is connected to more tools. And the same thing with email agent, calendar agent, and content creation agent. This gives us the ability to be more flexible in the, I guess, AI agents that we build and have that extra feature of not having to build another AI agent in another workflow and just have it all within here. All right, so the next one is actually within the tool softwares. So if I go in here to send a message, we have to make the connection, we have to do set automatically the action, the thing that we're doing. And now we're introduced to three different variables that we have to do as an input. You can put your email here, you can put the subject line, and you can put the message. But because of the fact that it's a chatbot, so the input changes over time, what we can do is press this button right here, which lets AI in and its end define the input. So it defines what goes in here so that you don't have to put it manually, right? You give AI the ability to choose what goes in there as an input uh, for you to do it. And this makes it so much easier for us to be able to make AI agents because all we have to do is literally just press this button for any parameter that comes through. All right, the next hack is actually the ability for multiple AI agents to be connected to the same exact model, right? Which you can see right here. We have one step right here, which is not an AI agent, it's just an AI step, which is connected to a model. And we can see that all the AI agents are all connected to the same exact thing. All right, so the next hack is actually the ability for us to use the structured output parser, which allows us to be able to do the thing that I mentioned before, which is using JSON to take an unstructured input. So as it can be a block of text, can be whatever it is. And we structure it in a way where it actually makes sense. So a variable. In this case, we have a human in the loop sales agent, which drafts sales emails for us. So I put my name, my email, my company name, intent, budget, project description, and timeline. I can press submit. And what this will now do is it will send it to the Google Sheet. It will add it there. 
to our CRM. It will then talk to the sales agent, which will speak to, first of all, Claude, which is its brain. And then it will then speak to the structured opt parser, because that is a thing that is going to help it to be able to make the subject line and the body of the email, which is then going to be sent to our email. And if you go right here, I can see that this was the input, which is a block of text. And the output was the email body and the subject line as well. And if you're wondering how we wrote this, you can simply go to ChatGPT and ask it, hey, can you draft me a input schema using JSON that allows me to have a subject line and an email body of the email? And that's exactly what you paste here. And that's what the AI will use to then give you the output that looks like this from an input that looks like this. So that marks the end for the eight and ten AI agent hacks that I wish I knew when I got started that makes your build of AI agents much faster and way more powerful. And if you want to dive deeper into N10 AI agents, check out this video up here where I go through the fundamentals of AI agents and exactly how they work. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.